All right, so top 10 refugium lighting mistakes. We've made so many of them over the years, and uh, now you can learn from us and how to not make the same mistakes that we have. All right, so number one, missing that this is actually a tunable piece of equipment. Yeah, and that is a mistake, is missing that you can adjust that relationship between PAR and nutrient uptake, where more PAR, more nutrient uptake, less PAR, less nutrient uptake, but not more PAR is always better. That's because when we increase the amount of PAR going to the plant, we're increasing the rate of photosynthesis and energy production. That energy is what the plant uses to grow, and when it grows, it takes up more of the phosphorus and nitrogen from the tank. Uh, and so that's why we're able to maintain those nitrate and phosphate levels uh, using this as a tunable piece of equipment. So note that if you're getting double zeros, meaning I'm uptaking too much, you can actually decrease the PAR, but if the amount of food that I'm throwing in every day isn't matched to my filtration, I can adjust my filtration by either increasing the amount of PAR or also increasing the photo length period or even days that it's on. So think about how you can use this tool to adjust it to your exact needs. All right, so number two, if you watched our master hydrogen and oxygen, which is really just pH uh, uh, video, you'd know this. Yeah, the missing the connection between PAR and pH and the benefits of pH uh, is the mistake here in that, you know, the same thing you said with photo rate of photosynthesis, higher pH. Yeah, so if you want to peg your pH, uh, there's like other ways to do it, but one of them is actually to increase or decrease the amount of PAR going to the tank or to the uh, refugium specifically, because when we increase the rate of photosynthesis with more energy, we also increase the amount of CO2 uptake from the tank. So uh, when we de decrease all the CO2, we increase the pH of the tank, and so just know that when you're toying with the intensity or even the longevity uh, of the lights and how long it's on each day, you can actually tune your pH as well. Number three, uh, I think a lot of people made this mistake in the past. Yeah, the mistake here is thinking that a full spectrum LED or basically like your flora lights or your white lights are better than uh, or like a red or purple type spectrum light because they're not. Yeah, I think anecdotally, uh, the light, uh, the sun is full spectrum, so it must be. However, like the plants don't actually utilize all the spectrums uh, for energy production. Mm -hmm. So for instance, there's a reason why a plant looks green and it's because it's taking the green spectrum and reflecting it back at your eye. It's not absorbing it uh, for uh, energy production. So like we don't necessarily need green in there. However, some people are creating uh, what I'd call a display refugium, mm -hmm. in which case a full spectrum like sun bulb would make way more sense because it just looks right. Uh, if you're using one that's designed specifically for the most cost efficient uh, way and most energy per LED, the refugium lights tend to look red or purple. All right, so number four, this is actually one of the biggest problems using the H380 that we started many years ago with. Yeah, and the, that is a mistake of uh, not having an adjustable type of light. So you should be able to uh, control that intensity, just like we talked about for pH and photosynthesis and different things like that. If you want to make your, uh, you can adjust your skimmer, you can adjust a whole other, other filtration, make sure that this is adjustable also. Yeah, so now they have uh, new options out based on the X platform, and so with Kessel you can actually uh, adjust it. But also with the AI Prime and other options out there. So if you can adjust it, you'll actually get that like all those performance benefits of tuning it. Now you can adjust a lot of these lights just by adjusting how long they're on. Mm -hmm. You won't get some of the pH benefits in some cases because they'll be uh, in a shorter period of time. But uh, nutrient-wise, I can definitely adjust it by, if it's on for three hours uh, versus six, I'm probably, you know, uptaking about half as much nutrients that way, so it's adjustable that way. But really being able to adjust the intensity is another level. Number five, the eye is a terrible tool. Yeah, so there's a lot of refugium or refugium specific type of lights out there, but that doesn't mean that just because it's red or because it's purple that it's the right spectrum. Yeah, so uh, a lot of companies out there have just thrown a bunch of LEDs on there. They have no experience uh, growing anything mm -hmm. in their entire lives. They just uh, have experience trying to make some money. Uh, <laughs> however, Kessel here is uh, like I have a strong foothold in the horticulture industry, mm -hmm. uh, probably even bigger than the reefing industry, to be honest. Yeah. And so they have designed and perfected lights designed to uh, support photosynthesis, not just in corals, but also plant life as well. 
Number six, though, cheaper options also work. Yeah, so uh, the mistake here is not understanding the difference between good and great. There's, you could definitely at one point, you can definitely grow Kato under like those CFL bulbs. You can grow them under T5s. Uh, you can grow them under full full spectrum lights. But there is a difference between growing it pretty good and growing it extremely well. Yeah, I think that's the kind of the conversation of, uh, well, hey, I used X, Y, Z, and uh, it's doing just fine by me. Probably is. Yeah. Uh, I think that's probably an accurate statement. It's growing for you. But there is a difference between good and great, the adjustability, uh, optimization, the cost, uh, price per par, all mm -hmm. that kinds of stuff. And so, you know, getting the right tool for the right job and doing it to the best of your availability or just getting you know an affordable tool that gets her done, totally different things. So number seven, does the light actually match the space? Yeah, so the, don't make the mistake of not considering the size and the space that you're trying to light for your refugium. I mean, uh, a little tiny light like this over a two foot by two foot refugium area, probably not the right choice, but there are different options at different wattages and whatnot. Yeah, so uh, in the instance of uh, the Kessel lights, you know, most of them are going to put out a like a circular or rectangular light pattern. Mm -hmm. uh, and so think about how you're going to use that uh, in, in there. Uh, I would say that the, this obviously is going to put out a rectangular pattern. Yeah. These are specifically good for the hang on versions. Uh, and uh, the Tunes ones can actually use underwater. So you can put it underneath, on top, uh, on the side. So really cool options, especially for those CPR like hang on refugiums. Mm -hmm. But even if I just have a, a couple of these, in a slim, like sometimes in my sump, I have a sliver rectangular refugium. It's not very big. You know, a couple of these might be the right option for that application. Uh, and the same thing with the AI. You can expect probably a, like a circular or a square pattern for the refugium light as well. So number eight, think about where it's going to be used. Yeah, the mistake here is uh, not considering whether or not you want waterproof because uh, most of the lights out there are not waterproof, but there are waterproof options. Yeah, so again, we just mentioned this, but the Tunes one is the only one I'd call actually waterproof designed mm. to be submerged uh, that I'm aware of. But also think about this a little bit in terms of look at your sump and kind of see where salt spray shows up. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I mean, any light just isn't going to do good if it's just constantly being sprayed with salt. So uh, think about that specifically, especially if it's a type of light that has fans and sucks that salt spray into its inner workings, probably bad news. Uh, so think about where it's going to be used and then pick the right tool for the right job. If you got a lot of mist or it's going to be used underwater, Tunes is probably the right option. Number nine. Uh, number nine is par the only thing? And it's not the only thing. So assuming that PAR is your only adjustment lever here uh, to control your nutrient uptake or you control your refugium, it's not. So it's not about less or more PAR. It's actually also about flow and about photo period. Yeah, so you can actually shorten up photo period. We already talked about that. Make yep. it longer if you want. You can even skip dates. Uh, you can, if you got it, it's working too well, you can skip every other day. But uh, one of the things we haven't talked a lot about is flow. Mm. So. I think the best way to think about this is you're actually caring for a whole totally different organism living in your sump now. Uh, and it has special needs and if you take care of them, it will pay you back uh, or at least reward you with performance. Uh, and so one of the things here is there's a close relationship between the amount of CO2 that's available and uh, photosynthesis and the health of the organism is ability to get rid of the byproducts of photosynthesis. So if you can put some flow in mm -hmm. there that uh, keeps you know, the water going through the catamorpha, I mean, in the miracle solution where it's like tumbling like the Death Star, <laughs> uh, that's actually hard to achieve all the time. But uh, if, if you can keep flow in there and so it's actually going around, over, or through through uh, the catamorpha, you're actually going to be able to help it rid itself of those toxic byproducts from photosynthesis, as well as provide more CO2, which is good for the organism and your tank because it's gonna uptake that CO2 and raise the pH of your tank for you. All right, so number 10, it's a continued fail. Uh, we haven't found the answer. <laughs> yeah, the mistake is, this is a mistake on us, uh, not specifically on you guys, but it, it's not finding that answer to the grow versus bloom debate uh, with the horticultural specific lights. Uh, used in a different industry, grow versus bloom it has you know distinct properties, but in our refugium, uh, is there a benefit of one or the other? 
Yeah, so in a lot of like flowering plants, what you'll see is the grow like a slightly bluer spectrum will create vegetative growth where it grows really fast. Mm -hmm. And then the bloom has more red, which will uh, create uh, fruits per se. So in this case, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, we've tested it a few times and we get to. kind of mixed results. Yep. And some of the, the whole tests have actually got uh, mucked up and failed. I know that they both work one almost certainly works better than the other, and I think it's gonna require some more experience to find out. All right, so if you're interested in learning more about the 360X from Kessel, which is one of the favorites here, Thomas actually did a review of it, and you can check it out right here, or if you wanna see all of the available refugium lights, they're right here.